weekend at Petco Park. 35 runs and 56 hits in the first three games, and two wins for the visiting Nationals. Gio Gonzalez and Drew Pomerantz hook up. It's the finale on another perfect afternoon in San Diego. It's a gorgeous day. Hey, Dad, how about a catch? Happy Father's Day, guys. This day's for you. Whether you're playing catch with your son or taking your daughter to the ball game or whatever you're doing, just hanging out on the berm. Great day in San Diego and a good day for the Nats to win a series. They could go three out of four if they grab this one today. Bob and FP, again, happy Father's Day and you too, buddy. Happy Father's Day to you. We have our kids in San Diego with us. Very cool. Now, last night's game didn't follow the form of recent Nationals victories, so it's kind of unusual when you look at the numbers of this series. The Nats could have been in a position to sweep. They've only scored one more run than San Diego. Well, today's a big day. You want to win three out of four. You got Clayton Kershaw on the shadows for tomorrow, so you got that to think about. But first things first, when you look at the series this year, the only thing that really jumps out is the bullpen ER, and that was all in the ninth inning last night, or the eighth inning last night for San Diego, excuse me. So a blip on the radar screen, some things got squirrely last night. We haven't seen that all year, so we're gonna forget about last night and hopefully a better day today. And hopefully a better day for Gio Gonzalez as well, recent struggles, but in the past, facing the Padres, and it seems anybody from the NL West has been a pretty good tonic for him. Well, kind of a West Coast guy, right? His roots with the Oakland A's. You look at what he's done against the West in his career. 11 and 5 with a 301. He's been good lately. 19 strikeouts, six walks his last two starts. I'm trying to get used to those unis right now, but the Father's Day unis, we'll check them out. We're looking forward to a good one from Gio. Left-hander Drew Pomerantz struggling recently. He's got a big curveball. And FP, he's the third hardest guy in the National League to get a hit against. Yeah, 189 average against. The only two guys that are better are Jake Arietta and Clayton Kershaw. So hits tough to come by today, but he walked five guys his last start against the Marlins. You got to get him in the strike zone. I've got 10 seconds to tell you about some really quick leadoff guys here. Ben Revere and Michael A. Taylor in this series. Couple of hits, two steals, three runs for Taylor, two steals, two runs for Ben. More of their speed straight ahead.
bags of ribs for the dads on Father's Day. That a baby. That'll get you through a hot afternoon with a couple of cold ones. So here we are at Petco Park. Can we stay on that shot for yeah. a while? No, let's talk about the leadoff, guys. So this season, the Nats are still trying to build something at the top of the order. NFP, even though the numbers don't look good right now, the recent trending of Ben Revere and Michael A. Taylor, pretty solid, and you just hope it now stays that way the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean, both the guys are playing real well right now. Michael Taylor, the leadoff hitter today against the lefty Drew Pomerantz. He's been getting the job done. The 16-game hitting streak as a starter. Look at the numbers for Michael A. So he's locking in. Ben Revere, too, 16 for his last 47, 340 average over his last 11 games. Both guys, I mean, I feel like that position right now is trending upward, heading north, whatever you want to say. But Michael A. Taylor really grabbing the bull by the horns recently. Hey, get on base, and the guy right there will drive you in over his last 16 games. Jason Worth hitting 350, four homers, 17 RBIs. He's been Mr. Clutch. The Nats going for a series win in beautiful San Diego. Announcing in the big league, send it back to D.C. That's all I got to say. D.J. Taters with a Z for the win. I love it. So the Nats over their last 13, win winning 10 of those. Almost seven runs a game, just under 300. The extra base hits. All the guys leading the way in that department. And with Taylor and Revere getting around the bases a little better, the Nats are up to 38 steals on the air with those 11 eighth best in the league. So the humidity's down. That's the good news because it's a sizzler today in San Diego 85 degrees and we're here in high 90s when we get to L.A. So here's the lineup Jason Worth 421 last 10 games. I mean pick out any number of games over the last month or so and Jason Worth is doing a fantastic job. He's also hitting 393 against left handed pitching that could come into play today as an Nats face a tough lefty and Drew Pomerantz. 288 ERA is only five and seven and as we showed you earlier he's struggling a bit lately but this guy capable of shutting any team in the National League down. Yeah, last start against the Marlins on the 14th was the five to two loser five innings five runs five hits so a lot of fives across the board and five walks that was the most of the year for Drew. So fastball 89 to 90 he can touch 90 through it he'll cut the fastball curveball is a good one a spike curveball we'll show you the grip on that a little bit later and like we told you in the open opponents hitting just 189. That's the third lowest in the league. Here's the defense. 
for the Padres behind Drew Upton Jr. Jay kept the outfield Ramirez Solarte left side Rosales Myers right side and Derek Norris doing the catching. Beautiful ballpark big dimensions in those gaps even though they brought the fences in just a couple of years ago by a few feet balls been jumping. Here at Petco Park throughout the weekend the Nats still lead the National League in home runs with 93 by the way the Mets have lost today and the Marlins have won there's a new second place team earlier today Oliver Perez having a happy Father's Day with his little guy Boy, he's got the glove on the right hand and he's throwing left handed so that's a good thing <laughs> for all you parents out there kids play baseball have them throw left handed they'll play for a long time and make a lot of money yeah and maybe have a bat left handed too. Yeah. It's my understanding that when he and his dad play catch he turns his back on his father <laughs> before he fires one right at him. Good stuff. So the Nats are hitting 251 eighth in the league. And again if you missed it Mets shut out by Atlanta today. Julio Tehran six nothing Marlins win. So there's a new second place team. So the Nats could be up by six and a half with a win today over Miami and seven over Atlanta. We'll worry about that later right now it's Michael A. Taylor against Drew Pomerantz 27 years of age from Collierville Tennessee in the Memphis area he pitched at Ole Miss in the SEC and here we go Taylor to left first pitch see you later we're underway at 141 and the Nats are on the board already hey we weren't kidding with DJ Taters that's why we played him. We just didn't know it'd be the first pitch of the ball game. See you later. There goes the no hitter. There goes the shutout. Michael A. Tater starts this one off exactly the way he dreamed about it last night. Taylor's fifth of the year, RBI number 11. And now, over his last 17 starts, he's hit safely in every game 21 hits to him. How about that? Good for him. So, there it is. So, here comes Worth. He'll take a fastball up and in Pomerantz only the sixth homer he's given up this year. Swing for the fences. Breaking ball drops in that's the good pitch. The good breaking ball that Pomerantz hits Tar Heels one Padres nothing. <laughs> Looks that way. Taylor's third leadoff homer this year the Nats fourth. And Worth will hit one high in the air out to right center. Jay and Kemp, center fielder John Jay for the first down. So he'll ambush you on the first pitch, and it looked like he got a cutter from Drew Pomerantz. Good swing. He's heating up. We just showed you the number. So a 17 game hitting streak as a starter for Michael A. Taylor. And he puts his ball club up one to nothing. And yeah, that's the home run sign right there. So here's Bryce and Harper in this series. Four for 12, a homer opposite field a couple of nights ago. Four RBIs, a walk. One for two career against Pomerantz. Boy, he just got under that one. And it will get out of play. Wow. What a great effort. He almost I mean, caught that. Rosales going head first, diving into the seats. I mean, he almost caught that. Watch this effort by the Padres second baseman Adam Rosales gauging gauging. Ooh, and if he'd have left his feet he might have had a chance. If he'd have gone all Josh Donaldson right there he might have caught that. Good effort nonetheless. Nats hacking early in the count here. Oh one to Harper and that's a base hit. Oh it's beautiful. It's a double. Better pick it up he'll go to second. <laughs> So Bryce five out of 13 in the series and why not. That keeps them honest now for the rest of the game. Well I, I like it when it works. And that's a beautiful bunt by Bryce just fire it down there. There's nobody there. The best thing he did if you want to break it down is he stayed in there. He didn't run out. There's no need to try to get down the first baseline when there's no third baseman. Almost like a sacrifice. Get it out there. Get it down. Nicely done. And with Murphy and Zimmerman coming up Rendon to follow. Why not. Whoa. Shave the beard. So here's the league's leading hitter at 360. 
clean shave and Daniel Murphy in this series. Three for eight, a homer, four RBIs. Showing the baby blues on the socks with the knickers today, by the way. 19-year veteran Sam Holbrook has the plate. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, there he is at first. Carlos Torres, second base, Brian Knight at third. Murphy, 11 of his last 19 hits are extra bases. Murphy to right. That's going to drop in front of Matt Kemp. So the Nationals are three for four to start Father's Day. Murphy hit number 92. Well, you know, some bad luck for the Nats last night. Murphy had some bad luck too. He hit the ball hard three times, only had one hit. So he shaves his beard, goes with the high socks, trying to change things up, and a knock his first time up. What new for Daniel Murphy? Thought if Matt Kemp kept coming on that, he had a chance to catch it. Yeah, he was playing pretty deep. So here's Zimmerman. By the way, the other leadoff home run for the Nats this year, if you're wondering, Matt Dendecker. So four total, Taylor has three. Just thinking it can't be real comfortable for Ryan Zimmerman, a UVA guy, to be wearing Carolina blue right yeah. now. Well, he's thinking it's a tribute <laughs> to Father's Day. Absolutely. In the series, Ryan two for seven, a homer, three RBIs, a walk. He has scored a couple. And a chance to give the Nats a real big inning, and that off-speed pitch really sailed. Derek Norris had to stretch to get it. It's a good take. Yo, I'm looking at today. It's Clayton Kershaw practice. Good call. They're facing a left-hander with a big looping curveball, pretty good fastball. And, and evidently the Nats won't see a right-handed starter until they go to Milwaukee. Yeah, four in a row. Four lefties in a row. Zimmerman to the hole. Ramirez, boy, he's slick. He is some kind of shortstop. 6-4-3. The Nats get three hits. They score on the Taylor Homer on the first pitch of the game. Michael A hits the Nationals 94th of the year. So Gio has an early run. Matson brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. By your local Kia dealers, visit dckiadealers.com to learn more. And by visitannapolis.org. Create your moment at visitannapolis.org. I mean, you got just about everything here. You have sailboats, you have yachts, you have the great Navy ships that defend our nation at sea. It's just an unbelievable place here. It is, and everybody's still recovering from the disastrous clouds in the sky yesterday. That was a nightmare yep. for all of us. Generous strike one call. G will take that all day to John Jay. Four for eight in the series. Having a good year. 
Hot shot. Murphy on a hop to his left. Then time to set himself to a knee to make a fine play. Padres, 10th in the league in batting average and runs, 9th in homers. Will Myers has had a heck of a series. So last night, hit a home run in the first inning. Sixth time he's done that. He's hit 16 this year. And against the Nats, he's 6 for 12. Two walks, two homers, five RBIs. Facing Gio for the first time. Yeah, last start, he was good. He lived into the Cubs to three runs on five hits over six innings. Struck out nine Cubs, 111 pitches. They're changing it up today, like Daniel Murphy with the pants up high showing the socks. You don't see that from Gio. He's a long pants guy usually. Check out the shoes, too. He's got the baby blue Jordans working. Wow. The jump man shoes. Those are cool. Right in there with 89 to Myers, who's sitting 373 this month. Nine homers already in June, 22 batted in. She's in the top six in homers now. And the top 10 in RBIs. Pretty good middle of the lineup here, Myers and Kemp. It's just always a question with the Padres. Who's going to rally around them, give them some protection and support in the lineup? Melvin Upton Jr., he's doing quite well down in the number five spot. And Murphy can't elevate enough to get that and Will Myers now against the Nats is seven for 13. Here's your Nats defense today behind Gio. Worth Taylor Harper the outfield Espinosa Rendon left side Murphy Zimmerman right side Jose Lobatone behind the plate. Will Myers a good player. I've been impressed with him this four game set. Yeah, he's been beset by injuries for a while. This guy stays healthy to look out. So here's Kemp. Three hits, two RBIs, three walks in the series. And career, three for eight against Geo. Not a full shift here. But Murphy is up the middle. The Padres have a lot of good parts if you want to go after some people at the trade deadline and replenish your minor league system. Fernando Rodney. Maybe Melvin Upton Jr., Matt Kemp. John Jay. I mean, there's some good players yeah. here on a last place team that if you go after, you can get some good minor leaguers. Yeah, they've dealt away some minor leaguers, haven't they? Turner and Ross come to mind. 2 0 pitch and a little tapper. Fair ball. Lobatone has the play at first. And as Kemp slams his bat to the ground, Jose throws him out, two down. It took a look at second. He was thinking about it. It made the right decision all the way. Headband working. So here's Jan Hervis Solarte. Came off the bench with a big hit last night in the middle of that crazy eighth inning. Prior to that, he was 0 for 10 in the series. So he drove in two last night. He had one earlier in the series on a ground ball. And against Gio Gonzalez, he's one for two career with an RBI. Gio, fifth career start against the Padres, two and one with a 3 3 8. And unbeaten is this ballpark. That's a hit that might tie the game. Taylor, or rather Worth out there. No chance at all to make an effort toward home, and that quickly the Padres are right back even. Solarte, only two hits in the series, but now four RBIs. He stayed on that curveball, nice. I mean, like he was sitting on it. Watch his hands. He wasn't out front and kept his hands back. He let that ball travel. Like he knew it was coming. And with the runner on second base, it always makes you wonder, did he know what was coming? Mm. So the Padres, every first inning, one last night, one Friday night, two to open the series on Thursday, but the Nets took care of that with a big third inning. So they have hit right with the Nets throughout this series. It's now Washington 19 runs, San Diego 18.
Upton has four hits, two RBIs this weekend. Geo working pretty quickly here, 1-1. One, one. Had some interesting matchups, these guys. 30 plate appearances. Upton, seven for 27, three walks, eight strikeouts. Facing Gio Gonzalez. Curveball misses. Working a little too fast right now. Needs to slow down just a hair. The fastest first inning a Nats pitcher has had in the series was Joe Ross. Friday night, 13 pitches. Up the middle. Good play by Gio. He will sit and get the assist. Well done. Padres, a base hit, a grounder, another single. And they tie the game after one. Now he can go take a seat in the dugout. <laughs>
Maybe we can see the finger off the ball and how he kind of pushes the curveball forward. Yeah, a little glimpse of it there. Yeah, a little glimpse. Nasty curve. Watch how much this breaks. Wow. First K. Here's Espinosa. You see some guys up there hacking. They don't want to get to two strikes and see that thing. Danny in the series just one hit but he's been walked hit by a couple of pitches and now 11 times hit by pitches this year. Right handed he's at 191 overall 216. Yeah, not afraid to pitch in with the fastball cutter combination get you thinking about that fastball in and then drop the curve. A lot like the guy he's facing today. We've seen that a lot in the past from Gio. One one pitch. Espinosa. On that big slow breaking ball fouling it. Pomerantz, 27 years of age, career record 19 and 31. Nets haven't faced him since he was a Colorado Rocky four years ago. He pitched a good game against the Nets. No runs, six and a third inning, six strikeouts, one hit, two walks. Swing and a foul tip, and Espinosa's down. Obatone next. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one. Today, look forward to Miller time later in the ball game. That's brought to you by Miller Light. Everybody on the berm out there, beyond the beach, having a nice Father's Day. Some families out there. It's cool. Lobatone. Hitting an even 200, 11 hits in 55 at bats. Jose playing in his 22nd game of the year. And a tapper left side. That'll be cut off by Solarte. And a very quick top of the second on 10 pitches, only 21 in two innings by Drew Pomeranz in a 1 1 game. For Felipe Rivero, who got off to a great start to the season, but has seen his ERA rise more than two and a half points since the month of June began. And I talked to Max Scherzer last night after the ball game. I asked him how, as a teammate, you try and support Felipe when he's going through a rough patch. He said, "Every major leaguer goes through a stretch like Felipe is right now. It doesn't matter how good you are. Everybody has a funk. It's just something that you mentally have to fight through." And Max said the toughest part of being a big league pitcher is when you make a good pitch and you get a negative result like Felipe did a couple times last night. 
in times like that, Max says you can start thinking negatively, feeling like the world is crashing down on you. But Max says the key is believing in yourself and why you're in the big leagues. And he says when you do that, you can get through the tough times and fend off those negative thoughts. Dusty Baker also saying the Nats are going to support Felipe. They're going to show him a lot of love, and they have confidence that he's going to bounce back from this tough stretch, guys. Well, we believe that too. Well stated, Dan. With our Coons.com sideline report, over 2 million vehicles sold and counting. The, the key when things start to go weird behind you is have the ability to not let it avalanche and get out of control. And that's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. And that happened in the eighth inning last night. And this ball club, this bullpen, hasn't melted down too many times this year. Well, I saw Felipe in the elevator this morning. He's still wearing it from last night. I mean, that's how much he cares. And uh, Norris wears one from Gio Gonzalez. Derek Norris, three for four with two homers career against Gio. Not that that had anything to do with the pitch, but we remember that ball game in Oakland a couple of years ago. Gio went 3 0 on him a couple of times, and then he did big time damage. So he's aboard leading off the second. Alexei Ramirez, the shortstop, is next. If a guy's got ownage on you, you have to throw in. I mean, you can't let him just keep wailing when something's out over the plate. That was supposed to be a fastball in, and Norris hanging on the plate. I don't think there's anything to that other than you're not getting extended on me. Ramirez in the series, two for seven with a walk. He's faced Gio a number of times, three for 13. Good run on that changeup to the outside edge. That is just foul. It actually hit fair and then twisted before it got to the bag. Close. Tomahawk that ball. You throw that fastball eye high, you can drop a curveball in after that because what the hitter thinks is he sees it out of your hand up high. I think it's another fastball. And before you know it, it's breaking under your bat. One and two count. That's fair. Rendon, a lot behind that throw, and he gives Murphy forever to turn the double play. Around the horn with a couple of long tosses by 4 3. Perfect feed from Anthony Rendon. Nice turn by Daniel Murphy, and it was the curveball after the fastball up, and he got the ground ball. Look at the feed. Murphy coming across. Perfect throw to Ryan Zimmerman. Foot on the back just enough because there's no neighborhood play anymore. There's so many things to look at. Was his foot on the base? Did he slide into the base? Anyways, nice double play. Here's Rosales with two outs, bases empty. The Nats and the Padres are third and fourth in the league in double place turn. San Diego 68. That was number 67 by our number one rated defense. Rosales a pinch hitting appearance 0 for 1 earlier in the series hitting 189 33 year old infielder from Chicago originally played at Western Michigan been in the big league since 08 with the Reds then stops in Oakland and Arlington Texas. Good look at curveball, just missed. Oh. 
walked him on a fastball with the pitcher coming up. Ladies, it's all about you. June 30th as the Nats celebrate Ladies' Night. Special ticket, all kinds of pregame activities. You also receive an exclusive Nationals Infinity scarf before the Nats take on the Reds at 7.05. To purchase your special ticket, visit nationals.com slash ladies' night. Here's Drew Pomerantz. Two for 23 with an RBI this year. He can hack. He's a 158 career hitter in the major leagues. Right over the Padres dugout off the end of the bat. Basketball by him. Noticing a little glove wiggle by Gio today as he comes set. I don't think I've noticed that before. Tanner Roark glove deal going. That's it. Gio, first K of the day. That's it for the second inning. So the Padres have left two. The Nats won. Gio will lead off in a 1 1 game. In San Diego less than a month from now for the All-Star Game. So fill out your 2016 eSurance MLB All-Star Game ballot. Go to nationals.com on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. You can vote up to 35 times. So today, tomorrow, keep on going. Nationals.com slash vote. Wilson Ramos needs your support. There's a great All-Star, Tony Gwynn. So how about our next five? Three of them at Dodger Stadium, all night games. The classic Strasburg and Kershaw tomorrow. Roark and Kazmir on Tuesday. Joe Ross and Urias on Wednesday. So the Nets see plenty of southpaws. Day off Thursday and then the road trip ends one week from today at Milwaukee. Look at this. Look at Kershaw's strikeouts yeah. to walks. Unbelievable. That's just silly. 133. How could he lose it seven times and walk those guys? Come on. Probably three of them are intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Here's Gio. Three for 18 with an RBI this year. No Zimmerman tailgate in Milwaukee this year. Do you think we could just go out with a camera and crash anybody's? Just as a tradition? I don't know. I told Jordan that we were going to miss that when he was in town. and. He gave me a hint that there might be some of his buddies there to see the Nats. We'll okay. see. I don't know if it'll be family, but 
Still waiting for the invite then. There might be a contingent from Auburndale, Wisconsin. Wait a minute, did you just say you're still waiting for the invitation? Yeah, haven't got it yet. Oh. I didn't know you had in previous years. Yeah. I thought you were a crasher. No, they invited us. Okay. Off speed, Geo down. And now Pomeran striking out three of the last four. Mikey T, as his teammates call him, starting this one up with a bang. First pitch of the ball game, right below his power zone, but now he has a new power zone. He'll put his ball club up. What, nothing? Did the guy catch that in his duffel bag? I just now noticed that. I'm on top of things today. Our Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers have donated 250 bucks for every tater to the Children's National Health System. So keep them coming. It's for a wonderful cause. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. And I was thinking he wasn't going to get a fastball, but he did. Way off the plate. So in the next week, the Nationals will be either flirting with or over 100 team home runs. Sitting at 94, and Taylor's two for two now. He's going to hustle around that bag at first. He's going to keep on coming, and Taylor is safe. I mean, it wasn't that close by the time he got to the bag. And Michael A. Taylor, home run and a hustle double. You know, from where we're sitting, as soon as it got past Alexei Ramirez, you're thinking, go for two. Why not? You have a left-handed outfielder going to the opposite gap. So he's going away from the play, and with Michael A. Taylor's long strides, might have ambushed John Jay a little bit. I don't think Jay thought Taylor was going for two, but you could see it developing as soon as he hit it. And you see how he had to kind of set himself up because he's left-handed and throw against his body where his weight was going into the gap. That was a difference. Great play by Michael A. Taylor. That's what a leadoff hitter is supposed to do, spark the ball club. Nicely done. His folks are here for the weekend series, seeing their guy play some great baseball. So here's Worth. Fly ball to center first time. Jason's trying to move the umpire on the other side. He doesn't like him in his field yeah. of vision. He wants Carlos Torres on the other side of the bag. There he goes. Hey, buddy. Move it. So when Taylor takes his lead off, he's looking right past the umpire to home plate. Rosales trying to keep him close. He's off and running. And uh, Michael A. Taylor just swiped third base. That's his third steal of the series, and he's there with nobody out his tenth of the year. If Michael A. Taylor's firing you up right now, raise your hand. This is great stuff. Hustle double out of way, Carp. I saw you. And then stealing third with one out. Derek Norris tries to rush the throw, can't get the handle, and keep on keeping on Michael A. This is fun to watch. Infield back for the Padres. Nats came to town with 34 steals. They now have 39. And there's an RBI sitting out there for Jason Worth, but now it's 0-2. Corners in, middle back. Nissan will track a high one. Well, he's thinking sack flyer more right here with this swing. And now you'll probably see him shorten up and try to play a little pepper. Middle oh. infield. Oh, that was interesting. Well, what was the most interesting is Jason stepped out. Yeah. Middle infielders charging. They went with this, the safety blitz. They tried to disguise it, and they started sprinting toward Jason. O2 target in and up. Worth strikes out on such a pitch, and now two down. Taylor got over there and with one out and it's up to Bryce Harper. Jason trying to look at the replay on the scoreboard as he walks back to the dugout and see where that pitch was. Bryce bunt base hit third base line first time. Runner at third, no shift here. And he's facing a lefty. Trying to get Bryce to fish on an outside target. And then the pitch was low. Yeah, we talked about it last night. Bryce hitting on the field all of a sudden, working on his opposite field swing, trying to pound balls to left field. But I thought about something else because, you know, I'm. The kind of guy that thinks like that. You think he's getting a feel for the home run derby? 
by hitting on the field here in San Diego? And will he be in it? Hmm. I tell you, there are some right-handed batters with those supposedly juiced up all-star home run derby contest baseballs. They're going to put some wood on the Western Metal Supply Company so building. Someone's going to hit it over it. Those balls have been known to be a little jumpy. They're firm. 1-1 one, one to Harper. 1-1 one, one ball game. Top of the third. And Bryce lays off that high pitch. Talk about that base hit bonus first time up. It loosens you up for the rest of your at bats the rest of the game to have a hit under your belt and be one for one. So I like Bryce Bunny on the shift early in a ball game. In the air to left. Under it. Melvin Upton. That's it for the Nats. So Taylor tried to make something happen with one out. Nats couldn't bring him home. But Michael A. having a great weekend. Duval, he had some late heroics for the Reds last night, and that kid is having some kind of year. 37 extra base hits. Paul Goldschmidt, neck and neck with Bryce all year in terms of walks, but he does damage as well. And Goldie, it's been Goldie, Goldie gone a lot lately, 12 game streak. Michael Fulmer, Fulmer of the Tigers. Look at that. Best ERA in baseball this month, three and one. How do you lose a game? Geo first pitch curveball a strike to John Jay and here in San Diego bottom of the third underway. Geo 33 pitches 19 strikes. Jay hit it on the button first time Murphy hit it took a hit away and now he hits it a second time and Geo's there this time. That's a hard luck 0 for 2. Charge it Geo. Boom. The way he's set up allowed him to catch that and not be injured. Wow. If he's off to his side, but he's square to the hitter. And a good athlete makes the play. Nicely done. The hot corner was 60 feet away that time. Or closer. After he threw the pitch, here's Will Myers. He went up the middle first time with a line drive over the jump of Daniel Murphy. Target in. That's still trying to find a way to pitch to this guy. Nine homers first this month. Look at all those categories. And with his first inning base hit, he's hitting over 380 in June. Those numbers brought to you by Jeep. One ball, two strikes.
I think if the Padres went digi camo helmets with those jerseys, it'd be sweet. I like the jerseys, though. That's a swing and a miss on a nasty curveball in the dirt. Gio Gonzalez, second K. He'll face Matt Kemp. Bases empty, two outs. Curveball's been good for Gio so far today, and it's been his best friend recently. And he's getting back to the fastball curveball combination, which you know, basically made him the pitcher that he is. And I love the curveballs. One first strike to Will Myers, then he expands with two strikes. Myers has to chase. Mercedes spins on the pitch track. By the way, Texas Rangers just won their sixth in a row. They now have two wins more than the Nets. The Giants won again today, eight straight for them, and they have 44 wins. There are some first place teams that are playing amazing baseball, including the Nets, all over the map right now. The Orioles won again. Nets hoping to take three out of four here at beautiful Petco Park. 2 0 pitch. Way outside. Kemp a little chopper in front of the plate first time and Lobatone threw him out. Might be swinging here if I remember right. Matt Kemp likes the 3 0 count. Pumping on 3 0. Likes lefties. Yeah, 389 coming in, eighth highest in the league. 369, pardon me. Geo, some good old Southern California hardball right there. Go 3 2 curve right here for the win. Let's see what they do. Says I'll challenge you again and Kemp back to the screen. The reason I said that is guys like Matt Kemp that hit lefties well they like the fastball if you miss one as a hitter you're making the adjustment in your head just get my foot down early get it started he's going to throw that again because I was late and a lot of times you see that second fastball go somewhere real hard. And I don't know if they'll throw three in a row right here we'll see. Kemp 16 home runs actually 15 on the year. He's going to take the base on balls. Only the ninth time all year that he has walked. We talk about conviction and being committed to a pitch. Watch this curveball by Gio. He was not committed to that pitch. He kind of wished it in there. It's been nasty all day long. And maybe he felt, uh, I don't know, 70% committed to that pitch. You could tell by how he let it go. If he really agreed with Jose Lobatone on there, he would have thrown it real hard and it would have been in the dirt. Silarte and a bouncer out to Espinosa. Easy toss to Murphy. Inning over. So Gio keeping things under control. Daniel Murphy will lead off the board. Already a hit today. 92 on the season.
inning of Nationals baseball is brought to you by the RAV4 hybrid all-wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com today. Go buy a car, Dad. If you can't afford a yacht, go buy a yacht, Bob. There's the Carpenter <laughs> family yacht right there. That's right. Amazing what $10,000 a day can get you on a rental out here. Yeah, you're driving that up to L.A. after the game with your family. Nice. A little stop, Catalina Island, yeah. maybe. There's a Nata dude. He's ready. Call him up. Look at that. Game face. Well, why not? Murphy's hitting. Everybody wants to concentrate when this happens. Murphy, a base hit away from his 30th multi hit game of the year. And that one up and away and he just popped it out behind short now it's coming forward with a little breeze Ramirez takes care of that. So since the Murphy hit eight out of nine retired by Drew Pomerantz. Well this one hurts in San Diego every time we show it. Trey Turner continues to get it done with the Syracuse Chiefs and when you have insight you know how to handle your finances with confidence. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever in You. Strike to Zimmerman. Ryan hit the ball pretty sharply first time. Alexei Ramirez turned it in to a 6 4 3 double play. I'm calling if Trey was still a Padre, he'd be playing right now. I, I would think so. They'd be nuts if he wasn't. Is that really going out on a limb? Saying that? Yeah, he went from double A to double A. San Antonio to Harrisburg. Soon in the big leagues after that. They've got a great veteran shortstop and Alexei Ramirez, but I don't know. It appears that guys like Trey Turner, and time will tell, don't come along very often. So Larte on the third base. Bag over there. Zimmerman a chopper and that hit his foot. Such a sharp curveball. Even though he hit it off his foot, it doesn't feel real well right now. That's a good foul ball for Ryan to stay alive. When a guy has a curveball like that as a hitter, you kind of have to guess where it's going to end up, and that's where you swing the bat based on what your eyes are telling you on previous curveballs you've seen. So, everybody else swinging early. Ryan, at least five pitches in this AP. And he gets popped up out behind second base. Adam Rosales. Two outs, a couple of pop ups here. And really when you look at it Pomerantz after a bunch of strikeouts has overpowered the last three hitters Harper Murphy and Zim with pitches upstairs. Rendon is next. Anthony struck out swinging first time up. Rendon coming into this game still over 300 for the last five to six weeks. So going back to May 10th. That's a span of 34 games before today. Lots of walks lots of runs great production. 
quick bat and a foul ball. First time up, Pomerantz went with a curveball with two strikes to Anthony. Straight change there? Close. No, it's a curveball. Okay. Didn't look like it did a whole lot. In the count, 2 2. Rendon will take a curveball now and then, just hook it down into the right field corner. See where Derek Norris has corner. given the signs, how low he's given them? Yeah. <laughs> I always felt like if you were on deck or maybe even the dugout if a catcher gave the signs below his uniform so to speak that you could see him from behind. See how close everybody is. I know I'm going real CIA here but you, you actually can. That's why you'll see guys stay within their pant leg area when they give signs usually and not go that low with them. That's going to get the outside edge. He is wearing some strike three calls, folks. One, two, three, go the Nets. Pomerantz on a roll here. Go to the bottom of the fourth inning. He's had a lot of action on the mound. Some comebackers. Sit, Gio. Throw it to first. Nicely done. Good play. And the curveball has been working for him with two strikes. And then how about a line drive right back at you? Field your position. Throw some curveballs. The story of this one for Gio Gonzalez. Yeah, Geico defensive highlights for the pitcher. 46 offering so far, 27 strikes. Through three, Upton, Norris, Ramirez. Five, six, and seven for the Padres. So it's 1 4 0 Washington, 1 2 0 San Diego. Fastball to the outside edge, good run on that pitch. Safe to say, Sam Holbrook hunting strikes. That's outside. That ball cracked into right center. So he took that off speed pitch. Upton stayed back. And in the series now, he's 5 for 14. So Anthony Rendon has been wearing some called third strikes. And the reason he didn't like this one is because if you look at pitch number five that was called a ball and that's strike three and number seven is right on top of number five so as a hitter you're thinking well that was the same pitch you just called a ball so I don't need to swing at that and then you call it a strike and now I'm really confused confusion reigns right now here's Norris hit by a pitch first time.
one for eight in the series with a home run the other night. And Gio misses low. Kemp and Norris the most ground balls into double plays for the Padres this year Norris six times Gio keeping it down and a 2 0 pitch popped out of play upper deck right side. Ground ball, but well placed. Espinosa can't make a play anywhere. Did well to get to it. And it's two on, nobody out. Sometimes you make a good pitch and the guy just hits it. Where your infield can't do anything with it. Hey, even if Espinosa gets up and throws this, Melvin Upton Jr. runs too well to get him at second base. So good effort by Danny, good hustle. Just a well placed ground ball, like you said, Carp. And we'll see what the Padres decide to do first and second. Nobody out. You'd think Alexei's swinging right here. Yeah, number eight hitter on deck, then the pitcher. Ramirez, 5 4 3 double play ball in the second. After Norris was hit on the first pitch of that inning. So the changeup right in there. That's a great heater under the right handers hands. When you have inside you know how to handle your finances with confidence. PNC Bank. Highest opponents batting average with runners in scoring position and Geo's had a lot of problems in this department this year. Oh, look at Matt Harvey. He lost yesterday. Keiko last year's Cy Young Award winner scuffling with Houston. Two, two on, nobody out. A little pop up left side. Anthony Rendon just drifting with it. That's a big out. Really pulled the string on Ramirez. And now the number eight man, Adam Rosales. Rosales, a base on balls first time. That was with two outs in the second. We welcome those of you who saw the Orioles win their ball game. 11 6 over Toronto today. Welcome to San Diego. Nationals and the Padres tied 1 1, bottom of the fourth inning. Gio Gonzalez trying to pitch out of a two on, nobody out jam. He just fouled out Alexei Ramirez. So the Orioles are up to 40 wins on the year. Michael A. Taylor, 
leadoff homer for the Nats in the first inning. Padres counter with a Solarte RBI single in the bottom of that frame. Play at second and a little lower on the throw. They might have had a shot at Upton. Well, you got a guy out there with 15 stolen bases and a nice daylight play by Daniel Murphy, and you were dead on a lower throw, and that would have been real close. Might have still served its purpose. Keep him close, even though he's inching off again. Here we go again. Well, if Upton has designs on trying to get to third base with one out, this might slow him down. Watch him inching off. And a lot of times base stealers will bet that you never pick off twice at second in a row. Who, who does that, right? I like that second pickoff by Daniel Murphy because I think Upton was thinking about rolling. Yeah, Murphy dropping that knee too, forcing the runner to reach for the bag. How long before they outlaw that? One ball, one strike. Not safe. It was 0 1 now 2 1 to the number eight hitter. Long look. Into center. Ball well hit. Taylor. Can't get there. Upton will score. Norris coming around, and the Padres lead three to one. One eighty-nine hitting Adam Rosales just really cracked one to center field. Well, when you fall behind a one eighty-nine hitter, you make him a better hitter, and that was a two-one pitch by Gio Gonzalez and Rosales. Stayed through it nicely. Good effort by Michael A. Taylor. That's all you can really do on that one. That ball had a lot of carry to it, didn't it? I didn't think it was going to go that far. And then once you're that close to the fence, the ball bounces off and you bounce off the fence. It allows everybody to score. I'm with you. Off the bat, didn't look that dangerous. And then another gear. Here's Pomeranz called out on strikes first time. And Gio misses to him. So the San Diego pitcher. Once down one nothing has a three one lead. Well, that's another hit against Gio with runners in scoring position. In this case a runner. So that thing goes up to about 420 or so. Three out of four are the Padres in this fourth inning. And this is the bottom of the order. Pomerantz one RBI this year, two in his career. Espinosa trying to keep the runner close. And a bouncing ball will freeze Rosales at second, two down. Top of the order, John Jay. Jay 0 for 2, hard luck. He's hit the ball on the button twice. Murphy scrambled to take a hit away from him. Then he hit that line drive right back at Gio Gonzalez for the first out third inning. So Gio hasn't had a start in his last six where he's given up fewer than three earned runs. Uncertain swing by Jay, strike one. Yeah, I think he thought maybe he's getting a curveball or was sitting fastball and realized it was a ball too late. Now it's Espinosa looking for daylight. Throw to the other side of the bag. So left handed hitters against left handed pitchers Murphy of course on that list and Jay ahead of him. 
The Yankee shortstop Gregorius Adam Eaton the outfielder for the White Sox. One one pitch. He got the call on a 2 1 heater away. Mercedes Benz with the entire at bat here. So, in saying he got the call, that ball off the outside edge. So, instead of 3 and 1, a chance to get this guy and not have to face Will Myers. Up and in, and that hits Jay. Geo fields it as if it hit the bat. That home plate umpire Sam Holbrook says he took that one off the hands. Second hit batter today. Dead ball. Rosales back to second. And now Geo will have to face Will Myers. Mike Maddox has his hand up. Chris Spires on the phone. Are they going to check and see if this hit the bat? I think that got hand. Yeah, that didn't sound like wood, did it? No. And this just could be a, a little 20 second timeout for Geo as Mike Maddox comes running out to the mound to try to get him to regroup here. Big part of the ball game. You want to keep it 3 1 for obvious reasons, but Will Myers has been a tough out this whole series. Wonder why the Kansas City Royals traded Will Myers. Well, in that deal, they got Wade Davis and James Shields from Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay traded him out here. Part of that three team deal with the Nats. And a good scramble by Lobatone to his left. Ball one. Myers one for two today and seven for 14 in this four game series. Soft soft curveball to a change up. And now you're backing yourself into a corner 2 0 against a really good hitter. What do you throw right now. He's sitting dead red he's looking for the heater. Took Scherzer out of the yard last night opposite field first inning way outside and he'll be swinging here if he gets something he likes. Two runs in two men aboard. Padres trying to bust this thing open fourth inning. Maybe a little too uh, far out toward the edge for Myers. Right in there, three and two. Three one change up, beauty. Yeah. Struck him out on curveball last time. Does he go to it right now? Three, two, two outs, everybody running. Do you have confidence in it? Do you throw it right here? It's the pitch if you believe in it. 
Yeah, he buried it last time. He goes fastball, misses, bases loaded. Geo, third walk today. Gets down. Good take by Myers, and now the line moves to Matt Kemp. Kemp today. A short dribbler in front of the plate and a base on balls in the series. Three for 11. A couple of RBIs. A lot of things going on right here. Warm day. You're staying on defense for a long time. Eighth hitter of the inning. You know, I always talk about warm day, cold day. You don't want to stand out on defense too long. It can drain you both ways. And Gio trying hard to get his team back in the dugout and keep this just a three to one ball game. Three to one's doable. Anything else is going to be rough. Yeah, the way Pomerantz is throwing. Great curveball by Gonzalez in the counts even. Sitting fastball. Got the curveball. And both pitches were strikes. It's a 1 1 count. Left side. Rendon looking the short way to Murphy. So Gio Gonzalez gets a big out. Padres pick up two. Bottom of the order coming up 3 1 San Diego. Air Cuttery, home of the smile back guarantee. No small print, just big smiles. Mass and Yacht waiting for the trip up the coast to LA. It's the big one on the left. Radar equipped, latest sonar. And now the Nats need some offense. Yeah, it's a day for umbrellas in the sun here. Drew Pomerantz has retired. Five in a row and 10 of 11. Going back to the first inning. That double play ball he got on Ryan Zimmerman in the first inning prevented a big inning, and he's been very good ever since. Five K's, Danny Espinosa was strikeout victim number two three innings ago. Well, he's looking for a shutdown inning, trying to get his club right back in the dugout. The Nats are trying to answer. Espinosa, high drive, deep left center. See you later. That's a big fly in a big ballpark. 
and the Nats are back to within one on his 12th of the year. That was a bomb. Well, Jose Lobatone's hitting, so nobody's going to take off Danny Espinosa's helmet, but I'll tell you what. You can't pure one any better than he just did. My goodness. There's your answer. <laughs> Lobatone next. He goes up there swinging. Up the middle. Ramirez cuts it off. Throws him up. So that's the Nationals' 95th home run of the year. And for Danny Espinosa, his fourth from the right side of the plate. He was hitting balls right handed in batting practice the other day almost to the scoreboard in left field in that third little terrace area they have up there. So this doesn't surprise me a bit. Catches a fastball that's belt high out in front. And that's where the big boys go. Look how far he hit that baseball. 421 feet 107 miles an hour. And the Geo gets hold of one but. He's not as strong as the shortstop with a bat in his hands two outs. <laughs> he has hit three career home runs. And next up will be Michael A. Taylor, who surprised Pomeranz leading off the game with a long ball to left. It seems like Danny's always good for a home run in this ballpark. If I remember right, he likes to hit here, and it's been four games, and there's his first one, but it was a far one. Well, his dad, Dan, is here, so we just gave him a nice Father's Day present. Taylor, home run double. In the series, four for 11. Yeah, my dad had to set, set, uh, set. Give him a sacrifice bunt for a present. That's what he had to settle for. Take out a guy at second for him. Yeah. Here, Dad, here's a sacrifice bunt. Happy Father's Day. All the Masson family with us here. Bonus coverage. After the Orioles won their game, now the Nats a run closer in San Diego. So Gio kept that fourth inning from being worse. And then his shortstop rewarded him by getting a run back. Immediately. One on one to Taylor. Have you ever said see you later on contact? Because you could have right there for Espinosa. <laughs> Just missed. Home run swing and it's now three and two. Pomeranz kind of got that Ross Detweiler wind up going. Where he starts out of the wind up but looks like he's in the stretch and very compact with his lower half. Swing. He stayed on that curveball, didn't give up. Nice play. Way to go. High fives. Ball was screaming over there. Pomerantz, seven homers all season. Two by the Nats today. And Taylor having some kind of AB here to keep things going. Trying to get the Nats back even or at least get worth up here in the fifth inning. Three two. Taylor down the line. Is it enough. Yes. And Michael A. Taylor ties the game hooking one. Off the facing of the mezzanine on the metal supply building, and his first ever two home run game in the big leagues. 
I mean, you saw it coming almost. The swings he was having throughout the whole at-bat, the foul ball down the right field line in the stands. You got a couple hits under your belt. A home run, a double, you're feeling relaxed. And I think I heard you ask in the talk back in the middle of that at bat has Michael Taylor ever had a two home run game you saw it coming too, partner nice call. Well. Our crack research team consisting of one man said no he's never had one. <laughs> so it all worked out didn't it. Yes. So here's worth over two. I feel like we should play DJ Taters going to break that's three home runs in this game and we played him before there was one. That guy's got some knocks in him. Yeah last time we played him in Chicago that was a barrage. Yeah. 3 3 ball game. Worth up and away. So, Gio, you're back even. It's a big out he got in Matt Kemp. You, you had the feeling Kemp gets a single right there. This is going to be, you know, you, you start to drop your shoulders and think, how are we going to do this? But 3 to 1 as a player, you, hey, we got this. We're swinging it well. That's nothing. It's a big out he got. So, Taylor goes from four homers to six. From 10 RBIs to 12. And from playing a couple of times a week to a lot more. Strike to work. And Michael also went from 12 extra base hits to 15 in three ABs today. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. But how about that? Danny Espinosa hits one a mile. Watch this to left center. Boom. And then Taylor says, I'll get out in front and hook one into the corner. So Michael A, the hitting star of the day. It's a 3 3 game. Taylor his fifth earlier Taylor his fifth actually Michael a sixth so he's added a couple today and the Nats are back even He's got to shut things down. Good news is Myers and Kemper in the rearview mirror for a while. Here's Solarte and a fastball in there. RBI single first inning for Jan Hervis. His 21st RBI and then a ground ball with a man aboard ending the third. Geo's up around 80 pitches now in only his fifth inning of work. The Nats have not had a starter go beyond six innings in this series. It's put a lot of pressure on the bullpen. Especially last night in a low scoring game. They were able to hit around it for two days. Three walks, a hit batter. Actually, two hit batters today for Gio. 
That's perfect to the outside edge. That was Michael A. Taylor's best at bat of the year. A nine pitch gem fouling off nasty pitches with two strikes to get to the one he hit out. He's doing it all two homers, a double, a stolen base. He might be the only Nat playing in the blue uniform tomorrow in Los Angeles. <laughs> nope, I'm wearing this one. Sorry, Dusty. It's got hits in it. He's got to get permission from Vince Scully to do that. Gio walks the leadoff now. Fourth walk today. See what your team gets you right back in the game, ties it up. That should be newfound energy, regardless of how hard you worked in the fourth, how hot it is here today. You know, that's a Red Bull. That's a couple cups of coffee. You go out there, you pound the zone, let your defense work, keep the momentum, get you right back in the dugout, and hope you get a win. Upton base hit last time. That was leading off the fourth and got their rally going. He's up there pumping again. Good location took a little bit off 89 as opposed to 90 or 91. I wanted to. Take one at somebody to double up this guy. So it's a little tapper. This is going to be close, and there was some miscommunication there. Gio throws it away. Salarte held it third as Harper got into the corner to back it up. Looked like a little glitch there. It, was it going to be Gio or Lobaton? Well, the first mistake Gio made was fielding it with his glove. You got to barehand this ball. It's not rolling. So now you have the whole transfer thing with a guy that can fly. You got to barehand that. As soon as he puts it in his glove, he has to switch to his bare hand to throw it. He's safe. And then to compound things, he throws it away. And it looks like he's a little frustrated with Jose Lobaton that he didn't take charge. But either way, this is not the shutdown inning that. Dusty Baker's looking for after tying this ball game up. I think he thought Lobaton was going to get it. He did. They're looking at each other. Look, he's looking at Lobaton, and then he's thinking, Jose didn't get it. Now I got to get it. And maybe the reason he gloved it because he got a little surprised by the whole deal. Felipe Rivero made a costly error last night. Geo makes one here. I guess they gave up then a hit and added an error on that play. Derek Norris hit by a pitch. Singled to the shortstop hole last time. All he's got to do is hit one. Not at Gio or Rendon, and he has an RBI. One ball, one strike. Good heater. Now, can Gio find a way to finish off a hitter? He's had a chance to do that to both hitters here so far in the fifth. Well, that's where you got to bow your neck and go right at guys and maybe use the frustration in your favor. You get angry. Long 
count on Solarte. Walked him, had Upton in the hole. Lasting Dusty once is another long day for his bullpen here. It looks like it's going to happen one way or the other. That ball is to left, worth drifting over. Padres will take the lead as Solarte easily scores. Upton stays at second and a 4 3 game. That's Derek Norris's seventh career RBI against Gio Gonzalez. Well, four pitch walk will score most of the time. And after the air, a nice piece of hitting by Derek Norris makes it a 4 3 game. I'm a little surprised that Melvin Upton Jr. didn't think about advancing with one out to third. Jason Worth was going away from that play and deep in left field. That would have been an interesting situation if he forced mm -hmm. the issue. Here's Ramirez hitting the ball to Rendon twice once a double play once a foul out. You got to keep him close at second here too. Junior, I'm saying, you know what? They picked off two times in a row last time. There's no way they do it again. No way. And if they do, they got me. I'm just going to wing it right here. Murphy staying close to the bag. And a ball hooking foul. Padres have had seven base runners in the last two innings. Here we go again. Upton way off second. I can see why Murphy wants to pick him off. That's a huge lead, and he's trying to get a bigger one. I just like to pick up your legs inside move to second as a base stealer that gets in your head and you just can't go now when Gio lifts up his foot because you are not sure if he's coming to second or going home. So ahead is Gio one ball two strikes. First three innings he had 46 pitches. With one out now in the fifth inning. He's four from a hundred. That was the closest one this time. Murphy wants him to check it. Yeah, Murphy gesturing to the third base dugout. He just said it's close. He told second base umpire Carlos Torres it was close. Daylight, you see him throw the hand, block the bag with his knee. That was close, but I think he got in there. Real close. Count still one and two. The Padres have put the ball in play against Gio today. He only has two strikeouts. He's hurt his own cause with four walks. And hitting two batters. They're not a free swinging air it all out team. They can put it in play and put pressure on you. One two with one out again. That's up the middle. Taylor charging hard around third Upton. Pro is up the line and that cost a chance for a play at the plate. Now it's five three San Diego.
Nice piece of hit here by Alexei Ramirez staying inside the baseball going back up the middle of Michael Lake Taylor had to rush because of the speed of Melvin Upton Jr. That's what speed does to you as an outfielder. You know that he can run. You know you have to get rid of it and that's why the throw went up the line. He didn't have time to really set himself and be accurate because of the speed. Not the shutdown inning Dusty Baker was looking for. Here's Rosales. He's walked and doubled. Drove in two last time. There's nothing going on in the Nats bullpen. The starters have not gone deep in this series. Pitcher on deck. That even sings up one one. Joe Gonzalez 116 pitches two times ago at Chicago when he gave up some runs early and then settled in really nicely and went seven innings. Last time he gave up some runs early to the Cubs but he got one out into the seventh. Wow 55 pitches last two innings and really only four outs. By Jose keeping the double play in order. Pitch number four last time he reached out and hit it out to left center to drive in two. Pomerantz gets a hit here if the inning continues. They got somebody up down there who's ready. Runner going, swing and a miss. Had the runner hung up, the throw back in. And I'm not sure what Alexei Ramirez was doing there, but he just ran his team out of the rest of the inning. Well, he was stealing. He saw strike three, and then he put on the brakes and tried to get back to first base, and they're going to check this. Hold on. See if he got back in. I think we're good. Double play ends it. And now you got to answer again if you're the Nats. Geo's third strike out of the afternoon. Throw beat him by plenty. Yeah, I got him on the shoulder before his hand got there. So that's it for San Diego. They pick up two for the second straight inning.
come from behind again. Harper Murphy Zimmerman coming up. And of course, Zimmerman, he's the UVA guy. And you, you Virginia Tech people, get after the Cavaliers as they get after the Hokies or Wahoos for those Cavaliers. It's June 29th. Everybody getting together, talking a little smack, competing. But for one purpose, to beat the Mets, you take home that beautiful acrylic cup. Travis Jankowski takes over in center field. We'll wait for a report on John Jay. Outside to Bryce Harper, sixth inning underway. Only the 70th pitch by Drew Pomerantz. See how the infield has changed because of Bryce's base hit bun his first time up. You got Solarte playing in on the grass, and now you have the whole left side if you want it. Well, the last thing he wants to do is walk the leadoff guy. And he did. Over 2 million, million vehicles sold and counting. Here's Dan with our Coons.com sideline report. Bob, Daniel Murphy was raving the other day about the depth of the Nationals lineup. And I asked him how you see the effects of that lineup depth. He says that when you have one to eight in the order going well, it really puts a lot of pressure on the opposing starting pitcher. And it makes it tough for him to come up for air. He said you get hitter after hitter putting up quality at bats the pitcher really has to work and you find yourself in some advantageous situations regardless of whether you get on base or not in that particular at bat and how about this for lineup depth guys the Nationals are only the third NL team ever to have six players with double digit homers in the team's first 70 games of the season third team ever in the National League. Wow. Great stuff Dan this offense never out of a ball game. That's upstairs to Murphy. So Pomerantz hasn't thrown a strike yet this inning. And when Daniel Murphy's saying you can't come up for air, what does that mean? Well, you can't take a pitch off. You're grinding every single pitch. You're looking in the on deck circle going, oh gosh, he's next. So mentally it's taxing too for whoever's facing this lineup. Finally a strike for Pomerantz. And it's 1 1 here in the six. You come up for air against Danny Espinosa, he can shoot you out of the yard in the eighth spot. And he's not hitting there today, but that's where he normally hits. So a lot of times you're facing a lineup. Where do you come up for air? Maybe the seven hole hitters, okay. The eight hole hitters, the eight hole hitter, and the pitcher. You take a little breather, if you will. But when you got eight with 12 home runs, and, you know, Wilson Ramos has been hitting seventh for a lot of the year. Good luck. Brandon Maurer could be appearing in his third straight game. Andy Green took out Colin Ray after just 82 pitches last night. Murphy looks at a fastball up. Ball seven. Three and one. That's Box Taylor, the big story. Ten total bases. Two homers and a double. Murphy a base hit. Bryce has a bunt hit. And Danny Espinosa, I mean deep, leading off last inning. Murphy high in the air deep center Jankowski going back and he's got it right at the top of the eight foot wall. He just came in for John Jay. And that's a long first out here in the six a loud first out too. I thought he had him. Jankowski goes back to the fence times it perfectly and this was gone. He robbed a homer. Would have been a tie ball game. 
What do I say? You come into a big league game, the ball's going to find you. 3 1 pitch right down Broadway. Daniel Murphy with the backspin. We've been talking about all series, and watch Jankowski right up against the wall. Takes a homer away from Murphy. Ryan Zimmerman next, 0 for 2 today. Double play ground ball to short and a pop up to second. Big gap left center. A lot of room up the middle to the left of the second base bank. And Zimmerman on a pitch upstairs strikes out two down. Strikeout number seven by Drew Pomerantz. Nissan will track it. And Ryan's been seeing that fastball up from Pomerantz today. He flied out to second base on it last time. This time he can't get on top and might have had a little curveball in the back of his head too. He's a little bit late. Pomeranz has struck out Rendon twice, swinging to lead off the second, looking to end the fourth. Neither pitcher real excited about strike one right now. <laughs> He's confused, man. He doesn't know what a strike or a ball is. I, I don't think I've ever seen Anthony Rendon go through a streak like this where it seems like the called third strike has been prevalent almost every day for him and it's been a controversial call 2 one Harper running swing and a miss high throw Rice is in there and he just stayed on the bag Bryce Harper if it stands his eighth of the year Bryce usually a head first guy and he decides to go feet first right here and he was ducking from the baseball at the end, kind of self preservation, and he just gets into second. Rosales tagging him on the way by, and we're waiting for the Padres to make a phone call. They want to look at it. They're going to challenge. It was hard to tell from that angle if Bryce got tagged or if. Rosales got air. If he tagged him, he's out because he never touched the base with his foot. It was his left hand that was reaching for the base. But I don't believe he tagged him. I think it was a phantom tag. Let's look at it again. So he still hasn't touched it. He's going to slide by it. And the first thing that touches it is his left hand. And I don't think Rosales ever tagged him. Maybe this will show us. If he tags him, he's out. Yeah, and but I don't think he ever got him because you see Bryce's left hand was the first contact with the bag. So Bryce is by him. He does the ole like a bullfighter tag, and they called him out. So it shows you what I know. Wow. Bryce is out. Inning over. And that's it for the Nats in the top of the sixth inning.
Boy, if that was conclusive. I'd like to hear that conversation. Carlos Torres between innings as he was going out to right field and it was he never touched me you could see him kind of saying that I guess that's the definitive view between Rosales's legs right there with the glove touching Bryce on the shoulder right there but can you really tell if that's touching him and is that enough to overturn a call the first replay I saw I think was from a camera in left field and it looked to me like Rosales got nothing but air as Bryce went by that was so they're assuming he tagged him when really it was blocked and, and between the glove and the runner sliding in so go figure he might be saying that Rosales was blocking the bag and that's why he had to slide the way he slid maybe that's what the conversation was about well the good news is Pomerantz is out of the game the bad news is the pinch hitter Ryan Schimpf singles up the middle to start the sixth inning boy Gio has spent very little time off the full windup today. Here comes Mike Maddox again, Matt Belial working. Mike Maddox is getting his work in today. He's been out there a bunch. This is to get Matt Belial loose for Will Myers. Pomerantz out of the game after 85 pitches, 55 strikes. He served up three homers, but made sure nobody was on base. Two of them leadoff shots. Taylor, a two out blast. And top of the order now Jankowski looking to bunt. He came in and then made that fine defensive play on Murphy up against the center field wall. I'll just close the book on that Harper Steele with this definitive and to overturn to me. I, I need to see the glove move or the jersey move on the tag. If, if I see the glove move a little bit or I see the jersey move a little bit that's enough for me to overturn a call. If I don't see any of those and it's a weird angle on a replay I can't overturn a call. Jans Kowski in the series, one for five. A couple of runs. He started the game Thursday night, had not played since. Hard bunt, pulled it away foul. One ball, two strikes. So Pomerantz went six innings, three runs on six hits. Walked one, struck out seven, gave up three home runs. And a chance to win his sixth game of the year. One 
2 pitch. That'll get out of play. Mass and Dan almost made the play right there. Got to make that play, Dan. Get your glasses on and everything. No excuses. Curveball. Chop to the right side. Murphy one play and he got Jankowski. Shimp to second on the first out. Bottom six. So here's Geo against Myers. Well he won't. This is it for him. So two dangerous right handers coming up. And Dusty can't chance that the Nats will fall more than two runs behind again. So Geo now the shortest outing of any starter in this series as he goes five and a third. This call to the bullpen brought to you by the UPS store. Stop by for all your printing, copying, and other business needs because together there's nothing we can't solve. Threatening again here in the sixth inning and into the Nats bullpen early. Potomac Nationals back in Woodbridge after the single A All Star break. And that's from Monday, June 27 to Wednesday, the 29th. So give them a call. All the great promotions, giveaways, and fun at the ballpark, or log on to PotomacNationals.com. 36-year-old Matt Belial, tenth appearance of the season, seven innings, eight hits, couple of runs. Matt. A 15 pitch 11 strike scoreless seventh inning last night. A fastball slider curveball change four pitch guy fastball average in 91. Opponents hitting 296. And he's got a couple of tough outs to get here right now. In that seventh last night he did not face Myers or Kemp. So Will Myers sees him for the first time. Matt Kemp has seen a lot of him. More on that in a moment. Padre first baseman, one for two, a single, a run, and a walk today. Hitting 500 in the series, breaking ball low and away, two and zero. Oh. At second base, Ryan Schimpf. Good base runner. Had a good look at the rookie in his first week in the big leagues this series. Up in the zone, a strike. 2 2. <laughs> 
Padres box score. One run on two hits in the first three innings. And a couple of runs on three hits in the fourth. Big blow the Adam Rosales two run double. And then two more last inning after a geo error following a walk. Sack fly by Norris RBI single Alexei Ramirez. Fastball right by him. Two down on 90 from Matt Belisle. Sneaky fast right there at 90. Watch how late Will Myers is on the swing. Challenged him. Good look at it on our Mercedes Benz pitch track. So here's Matt Kemp. 10 for 24 career against Belisle. Three homers, 10 RBIs. Matt has struck him out three times. Kemp today 0 for 2 with a walk in the series 3 for 12. Great late break on that slider. See Matt Belisle a lot because of that calf injury he sustained early in the season, but right now his fastball looks like it's sneaky at 90 to 92. Some tardy swings. Short arm, quick arm. Getting on hitters. 0 2 with two outs, and he'll show him a heater upstairs. Belisle looks like. He's pitching in 1920 right now with that uni. <laughs> Doesn't he look old school? But, uh, he'd be a giant from that era. 6'3, 230. Big man. There's a breaking ball, and the Padres have just added another run. So maybe threw the fastball up to get back to the slider. Kemp got it, and he drives in his 47th run. That closes the book on Gio Gonzalez. We will give up six today. His slider was down, but Kemp was late on the fastball, and maybe he wanted to bounce that, didn't want to throw it anywhere where it was hittable. And Matt Kemp stayed through it nice, dug it out, and made this a three run game. Geo five and a third, eight hits, six runs, five earned, four walks, three strikeouts. And Solarte with a fly ball for Jason Worth. So a lot of things have gone wrong, but there's a long way to go in this game, and the Nats are down by three. It's doable.
go hard or go home. <laughs> Y'all can't stop me when I'm in my zone. I'm in my zone. Main objective to be the best. Be head and shoulders for the bar to rest. Stand tall, let them know. I'm a swing for the fences. I'm a hit a home run. I'm a knock it out the ball. I'm a swing for the fences. I'm a hit a home run. Swing for the fences. Game summary is brought to you by Cox's new contour. Get right to the good stuff. Six to three. Nats are going to need a few more taters to jump back into this one. Danny Espinosa, Michael A. Taylor with a couple. Gio Gonzalez, six runs on eight hits in five and a third inning. So the Nats into the San Diego bullpen. 32 year old Carlos Villanueva. 29th appearance, 41 innings, 37 Ks. Great control, just five walks. But he's been hittable. 46 hits in those 41 innings. Anthony Rendon, one for three career against him with a base on balls. So, a song that we had been told had been buried under the sands of time, resurrected here to conjure up a rally in San Diego. I like it. Either that or the sands of Coronado Beach. Big. Breaking ball, Rendon couldn't get to it, 1-1. Up the coast, the Dodgers are batting bottom nine, tied 1-1 with Milwaukee. The Sunday night game is Pirates at Cubs. Rendon rams one to right center, sinking and caught by Kemp with a strong move to his right. Tend to play way off the line in right field here. And that helped Matt Kemp get to that ball. A good swing by Anthony Rendon got on top of it. Matt Kemp with glasses, eye black on under the glasses because right field, the sun field here. Makes a nice play. Danny Espinosa, home run last time, right handed, a monster shot deep left center. 0 for 1 career against the Padres right hander. Villanueva gave up a run on a couple of hits Friday night in the seventh inning. Taylor and Harper got him. Pitch number three was above belt high a little bit away and Danny just mashed it. That's a curveball that drops in. Right, Villanueva fastball curveball slider change fastball 88. And Danny the other way for a. High fly out of play. Well, it's getting late. You're down by three. Fernando Rodney lurking out there. He was pretty much untouchable last night. Fastball 96, change up 83. So you're thinking you really only have five outs to play with right now, unless for Fernando Rodney's having an off day. Dodgers just walked off Milwaukee. So the Nats will be playing a team five games over 500 tomorrow. Well, the rest of the division looking way up at the Giants right now. L.A. second place six and a half back. Danny battling one and two target in. Way up in. Okay, that's one you can't wear with two strikes. It's right at your head. He thought about it for a minute, didn't he? Watch him stay in there for a click too long, and then he goes, no, 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 this is at my head. I got to get out of the way.
Did he go? Yeah. Brian Knight, quick call, emphatic call at third, two down. Yeah, he went. No argument from Espinosa. Jose Lobatone, couple of ground balls, one to third, one to short, 0 for 2. So if he gets aboard Clint Robinson bats, if Lobatone makes it out, Matt Belisle might pitch a while. Shift on. Felipe Rivero. 17 pitches last night. Six runs. One two pitch. Got him looking. Villanueva comes into the ball game, lines out Rendon, strikes out Espinosa, and Lobato. Podcast is presented by Authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Six to three Padres singing, take me out to the ball game here at Petco Park. It's time for your Miller moment, just like we promised you earlier in the game. It's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. And this is a big play. Melvin Upton Jr. in the fifth inning, the swing and bunt, the tapper right in front of the plate. Gio Gonzalez fields it with his glove. 
Throws it down the right field line. Upton Jr. is second. You see the frustration. I don't know if it was directed at himself or his catcher. You be the judge of that. But either way, a very big play in this ball game as we move to the bottom of the seventh inning. And both of those men scored in that fifth to put the Padres on top. So we go bottom seven Upton Norris and Ramirez. Beautiful day in San Diego. Just on to me tough to beat the Padres on Father's Day. Upton couple of hits Norris a hit a sack fly Ramirez an RBI hit Matt Belial 11 pitches seven strikes and he'll keep it going here in the seventh not sure what we're waiting for the ushers are turned and facing the crowd while everybody between the lines is waiting to play baseball get off the field. They hear me? I think. I just heard on the squawk box trouble in the visiting TV booth. <laughs> Look for a man with glasses. Well, that could be anybody up here. Well, how can a security guard with his back to the field though when the game is starting? Upton. Two runs scored with those two hits today. Against Matt Belial career one for two. And the O2 heater low and away. Left-hander Ryan Bookter. Yeah, good fastball. It was only 93 the other night, but he was blowing it by guys. A lot of late life. Look like a slider up, and it's a mile high into short center. Denny Espinosa letting Taylor know he had a beat on it. Let's go inside the numbers with Jeep. So the Dodgers probables, the incomparable Kershaw tomorrow. Strasburg hopes to match up with him pitch for pitch. Scott Casimir's having a pretty good year. Hard to hit. Julio Arias, four and a half ERA. 19 years old, the last guy, and four lefties in a row. Pretty good matchup tomorrow on tap. Yeah, that guy right there is unbeaten. There's Derek Norris. That's Belial's curveball that stayed upstairs. Norris been on base three times hit by a pitch. Infield hit a run scored a sack fly he's driven in 20 this year. And Belial on the attack here two and one. Gio Gonzalez earned run average today went from 3.96 to 4.25. Pretty good gas right there. Two balls, two strikes. with a six game lead but I, I do think there's some storylines that are worth paying attention to that are going on right now. 
you know, the bullpen's been shaken up out there. Roles have changed. Guys still trying to get comfortable with that. Strike call. Norris surprised. Two down. $37 donation by Washington Area Toyota dealers to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Toyota K's for kids. Continue on. Well, I think, you know, Gio was so good early and now wobbling a little bit. You feel like he's going to figure it out. But like I said, a six game pad gives you time to figure these things out. If, if you're behind by two or three games now, maybe you panic a little bit, but because you have a little cushion, you've been playing really well. There's tons of good things to think about, but there's some storylines that might need little attention. This one to the left side, Anthony Rendon to his left. So smooth at third base. Matt Belial comes in, gets five outs, and this one into the eighth inning. Pitcher spot in the top of the order. Three going to the top of the eighth inning. Nats so get their second look in the series at Ryan Bookter in the ninth inning of a Nats seven five win Friday night. He struck out Chris Heisey, Michael A. Taylor, and Jason Worth all swinging. Yeah, the fastball average is ninety three, but it's got a lot of late life. Slider eighty four, cutter eighty nine. Maybe that spin rate as it hits the glove higher than most, but. You know, talking to the Nats hitters that faced him that night, Jason Worth, Chris Heisey, they were both telling me that it had some serious jump at the end, and Chris Heisey had a sneak peek, and he knows that he has to gear up to face this lefty. By the way, the report on John Jay hit by a pitch in the fourth inning, right arm contusion. That's why he left the game, and Travis Jankowski came in. So here's Chris Heisey, 0 for 1 career against Bookter. That's why Jankowski's in the ball game, and he made a fine catch to take a home run away from Murphy out there at that eight foot wall in dead center. So Matt Belial an inning and two thirds one hit two strikeouts he did allow one inherited runner to score and Heisey fights one off it's into right field Kemp coming in and he grabs it. Well here's the man of the day the player of the game for the Nats if you will Michael A. Taylor started this one up with a bang first pitch of the ball game gone. And then a double, a hustle double on a ground ball just to Alexei Ramirez's left. He gets in there, then he steals third. And in the fifth inning, he goes deep for the second time. A low line drive out of here. Have a day, Michael A. Taylor, and counting. Maybe he's not done yet.
Betting average up to a season high 238. Five hits in this series. And right now swinging the bat as aggressively as we've ever seen it. Look at where home run number two was down and in pull those hands in get the barrel to the ball. Looks relaxed to me and confident. Press it early in the season now he's just. Very relaxed getting that whip in the bat. Tension free swing. One two delivery. Lays off the high heater ball two. Taylor up the middle. It's a four for four day. Well, that's why I said Ann County. He's not done yet. Tension free. Barrel release right up the middle. Hands inside the baseball. Four for four for Michael Taylor. And now Jason Worth with a huge at bat trying to move the line to Bryce Harper representing the tie and run. Jason Worth looking for his first base hit today. Hard throwing lefty. A lot of ground ball room right side of the infield. As the Padres go into a modified shift. Michael A. Taylor had a four for five game against the Pirates last year. Four for four today. And Worth will pull a chopper, third base line, foul ball. So it was right at the bag, and Brian Knight, the third base umpire, took charge on the call. I went from get foul to stay fair to get foul all in the matter of like three seconds in my brain. I thought he's going to beat that out, so I was rooting for it for a minute to stay fair and get Bryce Harper up representing the tie and run, but it looks like it was just a little off the line right here. In foul territory. Solarte did the right thing, grab it and throw it. Don't be the umpire. Because you get paid way more than the umpire does. One one. There was some talk. That Bookter had a long look at Jason Worth the other night after a strike three. We looked at the video. We couldn't find anything but. Heard some chirping around the cage about that. Air quotes incident the other day. Two one to Worth. No sir, three and one. Huge pitch coming. He's got to think leadoff mode all the way right here. Yeah, you want to knock the show for the day. You're 0 for three, but you're also thinking about getting Bryce Harper up. So we'll see if Jason goes hacking here, aggressive mode, or he's trying to fill it up in hopes that Bookter throws ball four. Taylor giving the left hander something additional to think about. With the Padres, you don't want him worrying about that runner yeah, too much. I don't understand that throw over at all. Down by three, your focus should be right on the guy in the box. Or up by three, I should say. Strike call. Worth in the series, four for 12 despite 0 for 3 today. Good pitch. I think he wanted something with a little more plate. Tip your cap and 
do it again. Came into the ball game 393 against lefties and then on base percentage plus slugging right up there with Steven Piscotti who leads the league in some on base versus lefty categories. Three two again with one out. And Worth will keep the battle moving. Here. Fighting. He's frustrated. He got the pitch, fouled it off, but this is a good battle. And not to get too over dramatic, but I think the ball game right here. 6 3 Padres have out hit the Nats 9 7. Worth high in the air to left towering fly ball up and back into the shadows and he has it two outs just missed him. Now yeah, looking at the buildings in the distance kind of a not a big gale but a breeze coming straight in. Well the more pitches he sees we all know this as Nats fans the better he gets and he thought he pured one here squared it up but just too high. Got under it just a hair. And you see the frustration, pretty good at bat. And millimeters away from a one run game with Bryce Harper hitting. Shift on for Harper and the shortstop, Alexei Ramiro's, creeps over near the cutout of the grass at third base to prevent Bryce from bunting because he can't tie the game. Their third baseman, Salarte, is the man up the middle behind the umpire, Carlos Torres. Going fastball in here. Ended up on the other side and Bryce couldn't reach it. Tell himself stay through finish toward the pitcher. Not toward the first baseman that's what that little hand gesture is all about. Base hit a walk today. Try call. Harper in the series, five for 13. Two walks, a homer, four RBIs. Facing a tough lefty for the first time. It for the Nats in the eighth inning. Taylor, a base hit to go four for four. The Nats don't have too many hits other than Michael A.
Ocean City, Maryland. Let us show you a good time in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. And by the University of Maryland, University College. Poised and ready to defend all of us. Midway. Unbelievable the size of these carriers. On display here right across from downtown San Diego. The Nats would like to wish all dads a happy Father's Day. And we'd like you to join Major League Baseball and the Prostate Cancer Foundation in the fight against prostate cancer by supporting the Home Run Challenge. Log on to MLBcommunity.org or PCF. That's PacificCoastalFleet.org to learn more. That's why the blue uniforms today and everybody having the blue colors in their unis. A lot of people asking me on Twitter why the Nats are wearing these. Yeah, gentlemen, get your PSA levels tested on a regular basis. Early detection means prevention. Here's Felipe Rivero right back on the horse after a rough inning last night. Rosales leading off. It's right back on the horse every night. I like that he's right back out there today. To sit around and think about last night for a couple of days and make it worse in your head. And like I said early in the game, I saw him in the hotel lobby today and he was still bumming. That's how much he cares the next day, still grinding about last night. Didn't talk to the media after the game. Gonzalez doesn't play every day. He's had a good day today. A walk, a two run double. And Rivero misses outside. One ball, two strikes. Perfect fastball to the outside edge. Nicely done. One down. He's Brett always, Wallace, the hitter now. Excuse me, Carp. He's always been a three quarter guy and a slinger. But for some reason, and I'd like to do some video research, I feel like his arm's a little bit lower than it was earlier in the season. I don't know if that's because he's been used a lot or he's just in a funk. As Max Scherzer called it after the game last night in so many words. But it looks a little lower to me. I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Wallace in this series, one for five. Matt, Matt Thornton. It's probably if they add a run, it's definitely Rodney if it stays a three run game and a safe situation. Trucks tell me that the Padres have won 115 games when leading after eight innings, the last 115. So. <laughs> you're telling me there's a chance. I don't know. That sounds like you're telling you there's no chance. <laughs> Depends how you look at it. 2 1. They're due, right? They're due. The old baseball adage. And all 115 teams before I said the same thing. If you're 0 for 30, you're due for a hit. If you're 30 for 30, you're due to make an out. Right. Some pretty good closers in these parts. We talked about it last night. Oh, yeah. The question is. For a team not in the race right now, how often are you ahead after eight innings? And the Yankees have 158 in a row, but they haven't contended in a while. Pods trying to win their 29th game of the year. 
15 and a half behind the Giants if they hold on to win. And a 3 2 from Rivera with one out. Wallace a bouncer kind of in between on the shift. Long way for Espinosa. Finds his target, but it pulls Ryan Zimmerman off the bag. A slow roller, well placed. Got to be a hit. Well, that's the thing that if you're Felipe, you're saying, uh oh, come on. Alexei Amarista with a blooper. Somebody else I'm forgetting hit a blooper last night. Now a CNI ground ball. Ryan tried to stretch for that. Danny's momentum taking him away from the play. Took the throw that way too. Yeah. Salarte hit that other blooper to drive Solarte, in two runs. Salarte, thank you. Top of the order. Hot shot. Jankovic to Rendon. No way to turn the double play. Travis Jank Jankowski, pardon me. And Anthony Rendon gets the 5 4. A brilliant backhand play. Weird Al Yankovic hits a bullet to Thank Anthony you. Rendon. And who's playing better third than Anthony Rendon? Maybe Nolan Arenado, who we haven't seen this year, but I'd like to see it. He's been money. That was a great play. So here's Will Myers. He hit a two run double to left center off of Felipe last night. Jankowski out to end the eighth. Well, they say if you make a big run base running mistake when you're ahead, it comes back to haunt. It'll have to be a big one in the ninth. 115 and one. Look it. Padres, while we went away, decided to challenge. Jerry Davis has been on the horn for a while. So here comes the call. Is he picked off or saved? No, he's out. So the inning is over. I have no idea what anybody's looking at. He looks so safe the whole commercial break, but Nats will take it. I'm and baffled. he is so out now. We're going to go to the top of the ninth inning. Oh, boy. Sorry, Travis. I called you Jankovic and then you got picked off.
two different occasions. And we're going to the top of the ninth with Murphy, Zimmerman, and Rendon coming up. Johnny Holiday back in the studio doing some late afternoon duty. So a well-rested Holiday joins Ray Knight. It's our Nets Extra Post Game Show presented by W.B. Mason when this game and this series comes to an end. So it's Fernando Rodney. Last night he pitched the ninth inning up by four. 18 pitches, 13 strikes. He hit Espinosa, gave up a hit to Ben Revere. Yeah, two pitches, fastball to change up, 25th appearance. Check out the ERA, 0.00. Port City 138. Lefty's just 088 because of that nasty change he has. Couple bloops and a bomb. See what happens. Murphy 0 for 1 career against the right hander. 39 years of age, 249 career saves. So a bit of a milestone if he can get 250. Got the high strike call. Murphy a base hit first time. Pop up to short. Fly ball to the center field wall. Home run taken away last time. Off speed floating way outside. And that thing floating in there, and Murph just couldn't wait. You can see him saying change up. See that change up in as a hitter, your eyes light up, you think it's a heater. One, two. And Murphy flexing his knees, watching it all the way in. Two two pitch and Murph just can't reach that one. That is nasty. Tomorrow night it's Steven Strasburg and Clayton Kershaw. Palm trees, Hollywood, Dodger Stadium, two great pitchers. Kershaw 10 and 1, Strasburg 10 and 0. Kershaw 158 ERA, Strasburg 2.90. Kershaw 170 on opponent's batting average, Strasburg 220. Should be great. 9.30 Nats extra to start the night. Ryan Zimmerman 0 for 1 career against Rodney. Just missed. They also know a lot about a closer with a good changeup in this area. Uh, he's related to one of their coaches I hear. Trevor Hoffman had the best changeup I ever saw. Period. End of conversation. Well, the we, end. We associate closing with blowing people away. For years and years and years, he did it without. Well, he had a pretty good fastball, too. He was 95 in his heyday. Yeah. Slowed down to about 89, 90 at the end. But a shortstop in college, they made him a closer, and the rest is history. Two balls, one strike to Ryan. 0 for 3 today in the series. 2 for 10. On a pitch that he had to reach for. And when Trevor came into a game at the old place, I don't care if you're a visiting guy standing on deck circle. It was Goosebump City, and you thought, man, this is really cool. And I got to go hit this guy now? I just want to sit here and be a fan and watch this whole scene. When Hell's Bells and he come in, I still get goosebumps thinking about it. Fastball up and away, foul tip, two down.
Anthony Rendon one for two against Rodney. He got Anthony in a cold third strike last night. After Rendon had pinch hit, stayed in the game after an RBI single. And he takes that change up and kind of just turns it around backwards to the outside edge. Two outs. Fernando Rodney is going to be pitching in some very meaningful games in September and maybe October for somebody. Huh? It's not going to be in the uniform he's in right now. I mean, you never know, but you're thinking if you're in a pennant race and you need a closer and you need some help, the guy throws 96 with an 82 mile an hour changeup. Huh. A zero ERA in 25 appearances. Zero. And a one two to Rendon. Danny Espinosa next if it continues. If you're up by three and you throw me a three two change up right here you got me. I'm all in on ninety six. If it's a one run game different story I'm thinking it could be either or but. Not three run game nobody on two outs fastball. And you throw the change up you got me. Ball game over. Until the eighth inning last night, the Nats looked like they might sweep the series. And now, less than a full day later, they settle for a split, winning the first two, and then losing two. 6 3 Padres.